technically, so I'll make sure I understand, if you look at page six of the amendment and that 2A where it says training required under this subsection shall, uh, and where I'm confused is what this means. So it says right under that, not be required to be renewed. So if I already have my concealed carry, do I, can I automatically carry on campus or do I have to get some additional training before I can do that? No, you, you, what that means is this is a one-time training requirement, so you won't have to continually do eight hours of training that you would have to have one time. And your CCL would expire up in halfway in five years after the issue date. So then if you go to B, then it says the director may waive up to four hours of the eight hours? Correct. And again, the, the, I, the, the reason it is somewhat permissive is because one of the things that I know that the governor will task the state police to do is to determine how long it takes to develop a quality program. They have up to 120 days to do it under this legislation, but they're going to have to craft the criteria, the materials, <coughs> and the standards, uh, so it's hard to say definitively whether they'll give them two hours credit, three hours, four hours, or four. All right, now, and you may have heard me ask uh, Senator Colin Smith earlier, it appears that the exception for UAMS, and I, admittedly, we're reading on the fly here, but it's been taken out. That's correct. Uh, and I know that's a significant concern for UAMS, they have a hospital and school, and inmates to come in and out for treatment and psychiatric facilities and all types of things. And again, remember we're talking about access by people with this additional training endorsement. Lastly said that it was great work by all parties involved and I, and I do understand how hard certain folks have been working on this and I don't want to minimize that, but all parties involved I assume on the amendment did not include the campus police of the different universities, correct? No, no our, all parties involved is not accurate. Not, you know, that, that's, there's no question that this was involved with the coalition that was trying to come up with a compromise to pass uh, a, a, a gun that, or a bill that allowed some further uh, ability to exercise second amendment. Why is I apologize it? for the center. I should be saying the coalition of all parties. And, and I get it. I, I get it. But so why do we, and it's nothing against the NRA, why do we allow a special interest group into these discussions, but not the campus police who are responsible currently for the safety of our kids on these campuses every day? Well, again, this isn't my bill, but it's, it kind of is with this amendment. So let me just speak to this. I don't think there could have been more input into this bill than what Representative Collins has put into this over the last six years. I've never seen a guy go out and take town hall meetings and publicly take a beating like he has uh, and take input, sometimes in a very heated fashion. I've, I've sat, stood beside him in, in Fayetteville. Uh, so to say that there's not been an opportunity to get input from all sides is, is, is stretching. And, and let me follow up on that. I don't want this to come off as, as snarky or mean, but if you if you, when you say get input, if someone tells you we don't want this and the schools vote against it and then you don't listen, that's not exactly taking input. My point being, why do we allow a special interest group to fashion the bill as opposed to those people who are responsible for the safety of the kids on our campus? Well, I, I would again say that uh, there are a lot of people who are who, who have concern and care about the safety of kids on our campus besides the, the campus police and besides even the board of trustees of the university. The parents do, the constituents of both of us do, uh, the families do. So again, I, uh, everybody, we're, we're not new to this game. I think both of us know that uh, how this works as far as constituencies and, and we try to work with folks. The point that I think we've made here is we try to move this to a piece of legislation that is responsible, but also I think tries to do what the goal of the original goal of the legislation was, which was increase campus safety and safety for people in general in today's society. Because we all know that again, it's it's, it's different than it was 50 years ago. Thanks for responding to my, to my questions. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Bond, Senator Colin Smith. <clears throat> 